Alright, so today we're talking about 3.4 truth tables for the biconditional and the biconditional. So this will finish up our truth tables for the other two connectives that we have. Of course, we have several objectives that we want to cover today. Um, our first objective is we want to understand the logic behind the definition of the con conditional. We're going to construct the truth tables for each of the conditional statements. Understand the definition for the biconditional construct a truth table for the biconditional statements, and then determine the truth value of a compound statement for a specific case. So basically, the um, understanding the definition and then constructing the truth tables are going to be the big things that we do um, today. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Uh-oh. Right. So um, what we want to do is we want to use the antecedent and the consequence to create our truth table, right? So we're going to fill this in just like normal, true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. And so when we fill this in, if true leads to true, then that's a true conditional statement. If true leads to false, well then that's a false conditional statement, right? If you did what you were supposed to do and you did not get the result that you expected, then that's a false conditional statement. This is the only one that's weird. If you did not do what you were supposed to do, but you still got the outcome that you wanted to, this is still going to be a true statement. Some other influences at work here, all right? And for the logic to work, this needs to be true. And then if you didn't do what you were supposed to do and you didn't get the result that you wanted, then this will also be a true by con um, conditional statement. I'm sorry. So if you did what you were supposed to do and you got the result that you were supposed to, that you should understand to be true. If you did what you were supposed to do and you didn't get the result that you wanted, then that would be a false conditional. If you didn't do what you were supposed to do and you didn't get the result that you um, were expecting, that should be true because it's kind of the um, contrapositive of this one, right? So the only one that's sort of weird is if you didn't do what you were supposed to do but you still got the outcome that you wanted, um, then the conditional statement is uh, true, right? So now what we want to do is construct a truth table using the conditional. Right? This is a little more complicated. And again, we're going to start off with true, true, false, false, and true, false, true, false. Okay, and as we're looking at this, we have the not Q implies not P. Okay, so I have Q, but I don't have not Q. So in this next table, I want not Q. Okay, that's going to be my not Q. And so not Q is going to be the opposite of this truth table. So that's going to be false, true, false, true. Okay. Well, then I really need my not P so that I can do the implication here. So I'm going to have not P. And so not P is going to be the opposite of this. So I'm going to have false, false, uh, true, true. And again, now in this very last one, I'm going to have not Q implies not P. And so if I've got false, false, that's true. If I've got true, false, that's false. If I've got false true, that's true. And if I've got true true, that's uh, true. Okay? And so as you can see, it's very similar to the other one. In fact, it's exactly the same. Okay? So if this has the same truth table as this, um, then these are going to be equivalent statements. All right? So here's our second example. Okay. Phew, this is a little bit more complicated, um, but not too bad. Alright, so here's the idea. You've got P is set up, P true, true, false, false, Q is set up, true, false, true, false. Alright. You've got P and Q. Alright, so let's put P and Q together. Or Q. I'm sorry, that's the or. This is the and. Okay, so true true is going to be true, true false is going to be true for the or statement, false true is going to be true for the or statement, and false false is going to be false for the or statement. Okay, now I need not P. 
Okay, because I don't have not P. So I'm going to put not P in here. And not P is going to be false, false, true, true. Okay. <clears throat> and now I need to put the and in. So now I'm going to have P or Q and not P. All right, so here's P and Q. And here's not P, and I'm going to put these together. So true, false is false for the and. True, false is false for the and. True, true is true for the and. And false, true is false for the and. Remember, they both have to be true um, for the and statement to be true. And now this is going to lead us to our final implies Q, right? So I'm going to have P or Q and not P implies Q. Okay, so now this row, right, implies Q. So the false implies the true, right, because we're going all the way over here to the Q. So the false implies the Q, true, is going to be true. The false implies the false is going to be true. The true implies the true is going to be true. And the false implies the false is going to be true. Well, if these are true all the time, then this is a tautology. Tautology. Okay, so this is a tautology because in every case it is true. All right. And so this is just how we're constructing uh, truth tables. <clears throat> All right. Uh, you can reverse and negate the antecedent and the consequent, and the statement's truth value will not change. That was what we did in the first example, right? I changed the antecedent and the consequence, and I negated them, and I ended up with exactly the same truth table. True, false, true, 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 false, true, true. Okay? So that's what this is saying right here. If you're cool you won't wear clothing with your school name on it. If you wear clothing with your school name on it, you're not cool. Okay? So, in both directions, the statement is the same. Alright? Well, that takes care of objectives 1 and 2. We understand the logic behind the definition, and we've constructed some truth tables for the conditional statement. Now we want to understand the biconditional and construct some biconditional statements. So, um, here, if P implies Q and Q implies P, the truth table for the biconditional statement is a little bit different, right? Because if P implies Q is true, this is going to be true, and if Q implies P is true, then this is going to be true. So both directions, this is true, so this will be a true statement. However, if the true implies the false, this statement is already false, and with an AND, remember, you only need one to be false for the whole statement to be false. So this is going to be false. And while the false implies the true is okay, the true implies the false is not okay. So the other direction for this one is also false. So this one is not going to work. But here, false implies false. False implies false. This works both directions. And so this is going to be true. Okay? So if you did what you were supposed to do and you got what you were supposed to get, both directions, that's going to be true. If you didn't do what you were supposed to do and you didn't get what you were supposed to get both directions that's going to be true um, but if you didn't uh, if you did what you were supposed to do in these and you didn't get what you were supposed to get in some direction then these are both going to be false All right. so this is the biconditional statement um, if and only if is a, is a little harder condition, like the AND is a little harder condition, right? Both of them have to be true, so this is very similar to that. Um, this is just, this slide is just a roundup of all of the things that we've done, okay? So, just take a look at that slide, understand the truth tables of each one, and the definitions. So we're going to move on past that one. And so now, here is our final 
example. All right, our last thing, we want to determine the truth value of a compound statement for a specific case. And so let's say you receive a letter that states you have been assigned a super million dollar prize entry number. If your number matches the winning pre-selected number and you return the number before the deadline, you will win a million dollars. Suppose that your number does not match the winning pre-selected number, you return the number before the deadline and only win a free issue of the magazine. Under these conditions, can you sue the credit card company for making a false claim? All right. So the very first thing that we want to do is assign letters to the simple statements of the claim, right? This is what I want to do. So what are the simple statements of the claim? If you look, right, uh, suppose your number does not match the winning pre-selected number. Okay, so we need to have P be your number matches the winning pre-selected number. Your number matches the pre oops selected number okay because we don't like to put negations in our statement so we're gonna put P is gonna be your number matches the pre-selected number you return the number before the deadline Q you return the number before the deadline. Okay, you return the number before the deadline. Sorry about my spelling today, so no bueno. All right. <clears throat> okay, so and then we need R, right? Um, you will win a million dollars. Okay, so here you only win a free issue of the magazine, but if you look up here, um, you're supposed to win a million dollars. Okay, so um, R is going to be you win one million dollars. Okay, so your pre selected number matches, you return the number before the deadline, you win one million dollars. So those are assigning the letters to each of our statements. Now, if you look, if, oops, let me slide it down. If your number matches the winning pre-selected number and you return your number on time. So this is an if-then statement. So this is going to be P and Q, comma, implies you will win the million dollars, R. Okay, and by the dominance of the connectives, the uh, conditional ties these two guys together, but I'm going to go ahead and put the parentheses in. So here's my translation of the statement. All right. So now what we want to do is go ahead and substitute the truth values in for P and Q um, into R, right? Uh, let's go this way. Yes. Okay. So now Suppose your number does not match the pre-selected winning number, all right? Well, P, P, remember, is your number does match, so P is going to be false. You have false, okay? Um, you return the number before the deadline. You return before the number before the deadline, so Q is going to be true. And Q is true, and that implies... Okay, you only win a free issue of the magazine, so it is false that you win the million dollars. Okay, so this is going to be false. All right, now from here, it's just a matter of is false and true true or false? Well, false and true is false, and false implies false is true, and so the claim is true. They are not making a false claim. Alright, so they are not making a false claim. I'm sorry, um, but because the pre-selected number wasn't actually selected, the magazine subscription is the best that you're going to do. Um, and so, this concludes our uh, objectives. Alright, this concludes 3.4. That makes us happy. 
So, um, if you're in my class, go ahead and move on to the next video, 3.5.